Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about exception propagation. To motivate for that, let's look at a piece of code that does not use exception at all to begin with. So in here, I define a function called foo. All foo does is it prints out, OK, something is wrong, and it returns a minus 1 to indicate something goes wrong inside the foo function. Now, um, nothing is really wrong here, so this is just a uh, simulation of what if something goes wrong and they use a return statement to tell the caller um, that um, it, it encounters a, an error. Now bar calls full and supposedly uh, if everything goes well inside full then bar can say everything is fine and then it goes on right and if something is wrong with full then bar should should not say everything is fine however when you run this piece of code even though fool says oh no something is wrong but bar still say that everything is fine and the reason for that is that bar is doing something incorrect right it should have said that the re result returned by fool and if it is negative one then it should not print everything is fine however there's nothing here that say that bar has to check the result has to check the return value of full and that's why we allow this error to kind of um, go silently catch the error that is returned by full and that is against one of the zens of python that error should never pass silently right but in this case, we allowed it to pass silently. And the reason, one of the main factor for our allowing that to happen is because we use return value to indicate error, but return values can be ignored. Now, what if instead of using negative one as a return value to indicate an error, we use exception instead? So we can do raise. I'm just going to use the generic exception, even though it's not the best idea. But for demonstration, let's just do that. We'll raise an exception, right? And that's all the change we have to do. We're not changing bar. And let's run the code to see what happens. Well, so obviously, we see a oh no exception. And while exception might look scary the good thing is we didn't print out everything is fine because obviously not everything is fine so at least we're consistent right we're not giving the end user conflicting messages one is saying oh no the other one is saying everything is fine and this actually satisfies the that zen of python that says error shall not pass silently Right, because uh, exception that not handle, so ex an unexpected unhandled exception, it cannot just be ignored because it crashes our program. And as a matter of fact, we can actually get rid of the result here because we are no longer relying on um, the return value to check whether full succeed or not. So this will still work the same as before now the next question is well this crashes our program which is something we don't like to see happen so what should we do well one obvious answer is because full is the one that raises an exception we can handle it by putting it inside a try except but what are we what is bar going to do when there is an error maybe there isn't anything that bar can meaningfully do because it expect full to succeed in order or before it can proceed with the rest of the thing that it wants to do well in that case it's actually okay for bar not to handle the exception raised by full but instead allow the exception to be propagated up to the caller of bar and in that case we can then put the call to board 
inside a try except block. And in this case, because we call bar from the global scope, then maybe there's something meaningful that we can do uh, about that error, maybe just to print it out. So we can say um, here handling exception. And we can just print out E in this case. So we're handling the exception. The exception is just contains the message, oh no. And this is what I meant by exception propagation, that um, if the immediate caller does not handle a callee's exception, so in our example, if bar does not call or does not handle false exception, then that exception is propagated up the call stack. And in this case, it will go to the caller's caller. And if the caller's caller still doesn't handle the exception, then it will go to the caller's caller's caller, so on and so forth, until it's either handled by one of the functions or the call stack, or there is no more caller, meaning we are at the top of the call stack. And this is like at the top where we call our chain of functions. And at that point, the program crashes, as we saw earlier. But in this case, um, even though the immediate caller of full doesn't handle this exception, bar doesn't handle the exception, but um, when we call bar, we do handle the exception, so we don't crash. If you need a to see how this happened pictorially, then here is a step by step what happens. So we have two function definitions. Um, we call bar now, so bar is call. And when we are inside bar, bar calls full, so we go to full. Now full raises an exception, okay? And that exception um, is raised to the caller of full, which is bar, right, right here. Now it doesn't handle, bar doesn't handle the exception, right? It, it, this is the call of full inside bar is now inside a try except block. So in that case, the bar, the execution doesn't proceed to the next line, so we don't see everything is fine because, again, an exception is raised. And instead, that exception now is raised or propagated up to the caller of bar, which is back in this line here. And because um, the call to bar is inside a try except block, it handles the exception, and we see um, you know this nice print message here instead of our program crashing. So this is a step by step uh, of how the exception propagation mechanism works. It does take a bit of experience to see uh, the benefit of this, but hopefully as we work on more examples or assignments, we will see why this is a good thing.